Oh boy, I can't wait to see the dress. The dress is part of it, sure. But we'll also need to do something about that plain Jane makeup and hairdo. This is gonna take some work. Ouch. Well, I'll see you later, Cloud. No! Cloud, finally. Tifa, she, I, Tifa, she, she's, I don't. Take a deep breath. What about Tifa? I heard Corneo was gonna audition new girls soon. And Tifa's, Tifa's gonna be, I just, I, I don't know what to do. Well, I do. I'll come too. Hey, Cloud, bro, I can call you bro, right? Nope. Just want to say, bro, that I'm totally relieved that you're looking out for Tifa. So, like, how'd you get so strong anyway, bro? I said. <laughs> the way you fight, bro, is like poetry and violence. Bang, bang, whoosh, whoosh, you know? I really wish I could be just like you. My problem is that I tend to overthink and overanalyze everything. So, bro, do you have... Well, this is it for me. Call me crazy, but uh, I have a feeling that I'll just be getting in the way. Go find Aerith at Madame M's. Tell her to wait for me there when she's done. Think you can handle that? Yes, sir. I don't know. I'm not a particularly big fan of all of the extra scenes that they've crammed Johnny into. I get that they had to expand the story and all that, and Johnny was a character that was out and about, so, well, he's going to be in Walmart, why not feature him a few times, but he comes across as more annoying than anything else. You again? Got a letter of approval right here. Hmm? Huh? You know that's only good for women, right? Yeah, it's for Aerith. Who? Oh, that girl you were with. Sorry to hear that. Well, either way, you're stuck out here, pal. I can't let you in. I wasn't asking for permission. Huh? Wouldn't try it if I were you. Trust me, you don't want to screw with the Don. If you even think about causing any trouble, he'll make sure someone pays for it. And that someone might wind up being the girl you're trying so hard to break out. Or it could wind up being someone you've never even met before. Get it? You're in the Don's world now. Anyway, you've got some time yet. The audition won't start for a while. If you're sure you want to go through with this, then bring the girl and the letter. But if I were you, I wouldn't. Cloud already knew all of this. So why the hell is he retreading these moments, going back to Corneo's mansion and getting turned away at the door? For one thing, I don't believe there's anything Corneo could do to stop him. So why the hell is Cloud bitching out right now? Hey, get out of the way! Quit talking! Move it! Move it! Come on! really yeah Corneo's got certain tastes this dress is so gaudy and impossible to move in uh, 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 yeah cloud uh, uh, excuse me huh. hey wait a minute did Johnny forget to give you my message the one asking me to stay put? No, I got it. I was worried about you. I'm starting to think this place is more dangerous than we thought. Who knows what they'll ask you to do in this audition? No way in hell I'll let you go in there by yourself. By myself? Oh, 
Don't worry, I wasn't gonna. Come on, you'll see. See what, exactly? According to Madam M, you've caught the eye of a certain fabulous someone, and they'd like to meet in person. Huh? I'd have to say that this is actually a pretty significant change from the original game. Because the original game, the entire objective of you going through Wall Market and all that kind of stuff and doing all of your side quests and other stuff in the area was for the sake of getting a dress for Cloud so he could dress up like a woman and sneak into Corneo's mansion. But the vast majority of stuff we've done so far has either just been completely irrelevant side quests or things related to actually getting Aerith her dress. And in the original game, yeah, Aerith picked out a dress, but she just sort of walked over to a hangar and picked it up off there and said, this one looks good. Put way more into it. Way more emphasis on her in this time as opposed to uh, what we're going to see now as being Cloud's objective. To see the honeybee inns Andrea Rodea and convince him to give you his stamp of approval. You said you didn't want me going alone, right? Well, with Andrea's help, you can join me. It'll be fun. And honestly, I think you'll look pretty cute in a dress. What? It's pretty rare for Andrea to take a personal interest in someone. At least, that's what Madame M said. Trust me, this is gonna work out great. Uh... Come on! Don't you want to save Tifa? Wait. No can do, Cloud. This is our plan, and you'll learn to love it. So, here's how I think we should approach him. Madam M said Andrea was a man who'd give anyone a fair chance to win him over. So I say we march right up to him, explain the situation, and see where that gets us. Sound good? Come on! Don't you want to save Tifa? This trio of mobsters that are sort of... Uh, the gatekeepers to get into Corneo's mansion is also new. Good evening. Welcome to the entertainment extravaganza that is the Honeybee Inn. We're here to see Andrea Rodea. You must be Mr. Cloud. He's waiting for you. Mr. Cloud? I've been instructed to send you through without delay, sir. Please, make your way to the stage in the back. What stage? The one in the back, sir. Straight through those doors and down the hall. I know I said this before, but I'm gonna end up repeating this until we leave this area. The concept of what the Honey Bee Inn seems to be pretty different in this game than it was in the original. In the original game, I figured it to be a kind of a house of prostitution. In this, it's more of like a Vegas showgirl kind of thing. Hey there, dollface. We've been waiting for you. Come on in. Have a seat. No, I'm not here for... Huh? Oh, wait a minute. I think you might have wandered into the wrong room by mistake. Shucks, you would have been a fun distraction. <laughs> you could stay a while, you know. Stage is through the door on the left, babe. Then again, what was her intentions? I, you know, I don't know what the hell this place is supposed to be. And I don't think the people who made the game really know. Like, they're trying to sort of straddle the fence on what the Honey Bee Inn was supposed to be. This was something they carried over, though. The ability to peep through these keyholes and take a look into the other rooms. And little aspects, a uh, little foreshadowing takes place. Some things that happen later on in the game you can sort of get a hint about. <laughs> I'm gonna get ya! It's Palmer! I guess our first appearance of him. He was one of the people you peeped at through the keyhole in the original game, wasn't he? I guess this was maybe... I don't know. Maybe this is just sort of like a lap dance kind of thing. Although with that weird bee apparatus on our ass, that must have been difficult. But anyway, everything about this game is weird. Who the hell is this? No one notices you're in there. What shape am I making? Mm. <gasps> this circle? Oh, God. Johnny's father. 
I guess he would had to have had some kind of a family, but do we really need to see it? Johnny himself was in the first game standing outside the Honey Bee Inn, just sort of agonizing over his decision on whether he should go in or not. I don't know if he ever ended up doing it, but you don't see Johnny again until maybe like Costa del Sol or something like that. And here's the man of the hour, chosen by Andrea himself, our honored guest. This is your first time, right? It's okay. Do you want to practice your dance moves first? Why would I want to do that? Andrea thought it might be a good idea. Over here! Come on now! Hey, hold on! <laughs> Apparently they put a frickin' dance minigame in this game. And you're... I don't know, this took me by complete surprise. I did not expect to see anything like this. And I certainly didn't know really how to do this at first. So, which is why you're going to see me attempt it twice. But what's happening here is you have the little orb floating through the air. And then as it comes into contact with the icon floating around the cloud, you press the, press the button which is corresponding to the symbol that's in the middle of the icon. So, square, triangle circle, triangle, square, I don't know, all of those. Thing is, though, trying to recognize where it goes in 3D space is kind of well, difficult. You weren't awful, I guess. <laughs> Take it away, honey. I'd recommend trying this more than once. I definitely had to do it more than once. Especially considering once you get into the actual showroom, you're going to have to... You're going to have to get it right the first time. And if you don't, well, it's going to affect the dress that Cloud ends up getting. And if you don't get the good dress, you don't get... Uh, well, I guess you're going to want to try it a few different times if you play the games enough to see the different kind of results. You know, I'm not sure. I wonder if the animations that Cloud goes through are in some way linked to how well you actually do with the minigame. Although you think swinging this sword around might not be part of any reasonable dance, considering it's sort of, let's say, dangerous. It's a big room, though, and no one's near him, but still. You've got real rhythm, mister. Move over, girls. A new dancer's come to town. Come on, come on. The show's about to start. <laughs> my, my. Is that Cloud? Mm. Darling, I have no idea. <laughs> you, well, you just sit tight until Andrea takes the stage. Look at his muscles. Ah, oh, he's flushing. It can be bitter, but we can make it all so sweet. Here at the Huddy Bee, in every moment is a treat. Welcome to the Humvee Inn, Cloud. You seek my approval, do you? I understand. 
But those who crave my favor must first prove that they know how to move. Follow my lead. Yeah, this is way more elaborate of a setup for the Honey Bee Inn than we had seen in the original game. The character of Andrea didn't exist in the original game because this trio of people working for Corneo didn't exist in the original game. So we have this scene that goes on here, and it's a little bit over choreographed it doesn't it definitely looks like the two of them practiced this beforehand like why the hell would cloud know how to do this dance with andrea prior to showing up here especially since he didn't even know what the hell he was going to do when he arrived here okay so he's got this dance he's got to do what the hell am i supposed to think about this because on one hand like okay yeah they had to do more stuff and Nowadays, everything always has to be bigger and more elaborate. But the fact is that there is something to be said for a degree of subtlety, and that's definitely something that this remake is not really showing all that well. Nothing is subtle in this game. All the characters that had, well, sir, certain character traits or anything like that are really amplified in this game. Jessie is not subtle at all about her affection to Cloud, neither is Aerith or even Tifa. There are other things like the whole Guardian Angels of the Slums side plot in this game is not subtle whatsoever. The They could have had a more subdued way of getting Andrea's approval for this. I mean, maybe not had this whole thing taking place on this big stage. Because it's definitely not the kind of thing, it, this is definitely way out of character for Cloud. Doing this kind of thing is not something which I figure Cloud would do, or any version of his personality would do. But here he is doing it anyway, why? Because the people who created the game wanted to see him do it. Uh, I'm gonna hold my judgment until I can see the rest of the game. But I'm hoping it doesn't spend its entire runtime just sort of kicking us in the face with this complete lack of subtlety or even sense, really. Nice move! <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Honey, I'm in love. Yes. Yes, I will transform you into a vision of beauty. Now, without further ado, let us begin! Perfection. 
True beauty is an expression of the heart. A thing without shame, to which notions of gender don't apply. Don't ever be afraid, Claudia. today blew my mind hey look at me i can dance too how much did you drink Just tonight come over i here. can't help how it was amazing drink? you talk <laughs> did you see their look of surprise oh uh, he's keeping his face away from her i guess it's shame Not a word. Not even one? No! But one. But you're so pretty. Now, there we go. Inconsistency. There they have Cloud acting like he's ashamed to have been dressed the way he was. Like, well, where was that shame 20 freaking seconds ago? Didn't seem to have any problem dancing around on stage dressed like this in front of a whole lot of people, including the girl he's hiding his face from just now. So, I mean, did I get that they were inconsistent there? Do they understand that they fucked that up? I mean, I get that Cloud's personality in the original game wasn't particularly consistent because he was at first portrayed as being a sort of, like, extraordinary asshole. And then that personality sort of softened out as soon as he ran into Aerith. And that is actually, in, in a way, kind of... An aspect of his character development but in this it's just sort of like I'm on stage dancing around dressed as a woman now I go outside and I'm ashamed of it really come on I also take offense to the hair he's wearing the kind of she mullet what decade is this I mean a she mullet business in the front party in the back but yeah anyway here's Corneo's mansion <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look anything like a woman. This wasn't some cross-dressing thing. He was actually trying to pass off as a woman so he can get in. <laughs> Cloud? Is that you? Oh my god, that makeup! And that dress! Nailed it. I know. Thank you. Moving on. 